This guy stops by on Mondays. This guy from the Green Light Podcast. And I forgot to mention this last time. Sorry about that, Chris Long. Inside the NFL, it's new life. It's new version. With Ryan Clark and all your friends, Jay Cutler and Channing Crowder and Chad Ochocinco on the CW every Tuesday night. What's going on, man? What's up, dude? How are you? I am doing well. Uh, how was your football weekend? You want to start with Michigan, Penn State, and work back to the NFL? Yeah, I was there. I you, was there. I yeah, I was on the sideline. It was cool. Uh, did you uh, did you scream or yell or get a bloody nose or curse at a camera after the game or anything <laughs> crazy like that? No, did you cry? No, I got I got a buddy up there who's coaching, and you know, like uh, for for him, I feel for him, you know, because it was a tough game and all that, but. Two weeks in a row, I get to go to Tuscaloosa, and then I get to go to Happy Valley, so I get to see some real big-time college football. Um, I'm kind of on my world tour in that respect. Pretty cool. Um, yeah. you, you saw a one-sided game. Well, you saw a game with, with two great defenses, and for those who don't know by now, uh, Penn State fired its OC after uh, another loss to a Big Ten power that they thought you know they belonged to stand alongside. First Ohio State, now Michigan. Uh, Sharon Moore stared at the camera after the game, after coaching on an interim basis for, for Jim Harbaugh and uh, cried and, and cursed. And I get it from the Michigan perspective. Hey, our coach got suspended in the air on the way here. Um, on the flip side of it, though, I have a hard time, you know, believing Harbaugh knew nothing. I don't know, Chris, what do you think? Yeah. What was that like? Uh, I mean, like, listen, I'm not the most avid college football fan. I know there's people that know the details a lot better, but, um, I would venture to guess they're not the only people that have done this before. Uh, I don't know if that's a hot take. I think people have to throw their hands up and, and clutch their pearls in situations like this. They took it a little far. They were kind of sloppy, you know, like a Venmo, uh, paper trail. Like, come on, man, you guys are bad at crime. Yeah. Wh so, why, why does anyone have a public Venmo? Just put it on private. Like, I don't need to see that you paid your buddy 20 bucks for laundry. Exactly. And you know, like, instead of like, Hey, put a pizza emoji or something, yeah. which is what you do when you're buying something sketchy on cash app or Venmo. <laughs> uh, but I prefer Cash App personally. But Factual. but uh, but you know, like uh, they're like uh, tickets to Western Michigan. Uh, you know, here you go, Connor Stallions or whatever. So uh, I don't have all the details right, maybe. But I, I also think like Michigan's a very good football team. I wouldn't chalk up their season to anything that's going on. And I do think it's possible that Jim didn't know. I heard Biff Pogi, a guy I trust, say like I've spent the last three years with uh with jim harbaugh and i can tell you i didn't know about it so he probably didn't know about it uh but at the end of the day good football game good defenses i loved watching those guys play up front and uh you know michigan's pretty good yeah and i think that 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 assistant coach was crying after the game just punched his ticket to chicago or wherever <laughs> jim's coaching next year 100 <laughs> percent. yeah where do you think that is going to be by the way i have no idea i really don't i mean we there's a few coaches. I feel like we fired a couple coaches this year and they're, and they're still chugging along. So I, I don't want to put anybody uh, six feet under uh, in the coaching ranks, but I mean, like Chicago would be fun. Wouldn't it? It would be. I don't think, I don't think that one would happen. I, it's it just a gut. A, a little mouse yeah. tells me that that wouldn't happen, but to have captain come back, come back yeah, to Chicago. Cool. I mean, it'd be cool. It, that guy can coach pro football. Cool. I mean, like he can coach college football too. But coach. when he was in division with us, when I was with the Rams, I mean, they were as physical as anybody. And uh, it, he didn't leave because he couldn't coach. It's just kind of after a while that runs its course with him. Yeah. The best coaching story, of course, of the weekend is Jimbo Fisher hanging 51 <laughs> on Mississippi State winning and then getting fired. And yeah. and he gets $76 million with no offset which is just, I mean, America. God bless America. God bless yeah. Texas. God bless Texas. Yeah. God bless the SEC. We're in the wrong business. I mean, so, uh, we're, we're just yeah. slumming it here on the radio. Talking to Chris Long, uh, live from Charlottesville, after going to the big Michigan win over Penn State. Um, speaking of the Big Ten, C.J. Stroud, Big Ten quarterback, back in the state of Ohio for the first time since his college days. Um had a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter, helped blow that lead, then rallied him back again. Can you put into words, Chris, um, you had a pretty good rookie year as well. How impressive this is for C.J. Stroud? I mean, it's incredible. I, I, I sat there last night, and I'm supposed to break down all 30, 32 teams 
you know, get ready for our show, the whole thing, get ready for this show. I spent like an inordinate amount of time watching that game. I just three times probably on end zone and uh, watching the sideline view, watching guys get open by time, but more than anything, CJ Stroud off schedule. Uh, you never, you never blink with him because of that turnover margin. Um, he he doesn't turn the ball over. He did yesterday, but you know, like early in the game, he almost threw a pick to Logan Wilson. Logan was mugged up, bailed out, just unflappable, whether it's coming back from that, like, oh crap. Okay. This is that Lou Anarumo defense. I got a little taste of it. Now let's go to work or, you know, the pick late coming back and engineering that drive or, you know, let's not forget that drive. The first play is a huge chunk to tank Dell that he drops. And a lot of young players might go in the tank after that, but he just, he hits Schultz. He hits Noah Brown, who had a great, a great day, truck Pratt, and they, they got into the, into field goal range. But I, I don't want to, I don't want to overstate. I try not to overreact, but this guy, um, when it comes to quarterback takes, like, let's, let's skip the dating phase. Uh, you know, let's get, <laughs> I, we, 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 as football fans, I mean, it is time to put a ring on CJ Stroud and call him an elite, uh, elite quarterback. It's, I mean. I, I don't want to overreact, but the throws I see him make, there's only like two, three guys in the league that can make these throws. I mean, it, it's incredible. And, you know, he hadn't done this on the road. Um, I feel like this team in general is rounding into form at the right time. Uh, Devin Singletary was huge for them yesterday. Come out, run the ball right away. Chris, um, they ran it. That was they gave huge. Devin Singletary the ball 30 times. I was like a Joe Gibbs 1988 game. Yeah, no, it was, it was incredible. And Singletary, you don't think of him maybe, you know, because of the way he can catch the ball in the backfield and the way teams have used him in the past. Maybe some people don't think of him as a feature back, but this guy's a good player and might be the flavor they need. It, their, their run game with what Slowick had chefed up yesterday was great. And I think for the Bengals, you know, missing Sam Hubbard is a big deal. Missing Sam Hubbard's a big deal. Um, you know, up front, you're going to rely on, you know, sample, and a rookie, the Murphy kid from Clemson, to stop a, a, an offensive line who's been pretty good, even though they haven't been able to run the ball. And I think at different times in the game, the run game really hurt them. But more than anything, for CJ to go on the road in November, Kevin Harlan on the call, <laughs> I mean, it just felt like playoff football. And he he went and put one of those under his belt. I think he's going to be somebody we watch. I was I was driving home yesterday like, my kids are going to be in college. We're going to still be talking about C.J. Stroud. We're going to be watching football on Sunday, watching C.J. Stroud play deep into the playoffs. That's the kind of guy he is. Yeah, um, and last week we saw, we had Dario Ogunbowale on, on on Friday, and he said, like, guys break the huddle fourth quarter. I mean, they they – they, he said, we basically run to the line because we know the play is going to work. We have that much faith in the guy. And it, it's amazing what confidence and faith and belief in that quarterback or that coach can do. Like, look at the Lions yesterday. Like, Dan Campbell, first half, fourth and five. We're just going to run David Montgomery up the middle, and we're going to get the yep. first down. Fourth and two late in the game, inside the 30. Instead of doing what 99% of America would have done – which is just kick the field goal, play defense. He went for it on fourth and two inside the 30, bled the clock, and went home. I mean, pfft. Yeah, I mean, as a guy who uh, who had more than I'd like to admit on the Lions, uh, I was happy <laughs> uh, once he, they converted on fourth and two. But, like, on, on fourth and two, I'm thinking there, Dan, I'm yelling at the TV, if you don't get this, you're going to lose this game. <laughs> Because that's the kind of game it was. I mean, it was like one of these old Big 12 games where the the last team to get a stop wins. And, um, you know, to Jared Goff's credit, this is a situation I thought late in the game where there's a lot of pressure when Chargers going down to score every possession. They're gashing you. They're chunking you. And you've got to keep the, the, the foot on the gas pedal and stay in that kind of like one ahead slot. And... They did that throughout the entire second half, and I think that's sometimes even harder than chasing. And I think for Jared, that was so impressive. But the perimeter run game for them was great. You know, it's fun to see Jamison Williams get a big block, uh, speeding up to spring David Montgomery on that touchdown. Uh, they missed him in the red zone over the last couple weeks. I mean, if you include Tampa Bay there, uh, and that's something they wanted to get shored up. But this this team. Earlier in the season, I said, I don't know if they're contenders because I want to see them do it more. To go on the road, win this game, 
to be in the pole position they are in the NFC, breathing down the Eagles' necks. I mean, this is Ford Field, hadn't had a playoff game in 23 years. They're going to host one uh, unless they they really collapse on the stretch because all of a sudden Minnesota looks like a decent football team. Hey, I know you and Jared didn't over, overlap with the Rams, but yeah. – I, I can tell you, I, I think you probably feel the same way. Like, I mean, I am so happy, happy for him. Yeah. So happy for him. And there's a great article, too, that Sam Farmer wrote in the L.A. Times on Saturday, which told, tried to tell. I mean, a, a lot of it's still behind closed doors. The story of Jared's exit here and the trade to Brad Holmes and, and the trade to the Lions. But Jared evidently, like, went back to Sean McVay a week later and wanted an exit interview. They traded him and said, I, I want to sit down with you. I want to hear from you. I want you to say it to my face, but I, I want to go through what went wrong and where you think I need to improve so that I can get my closure and move on. And and he told Witt, Andrew Whitworth, who's going to do this. And Witt said, like, what are you kidding me? What are you crazy? Just go. Yeah. He said, no, yeah, I want to sit down <laughs> and I want to hear it. And he came back here first game in L.A., first game at SoFi. And he did that. It's kind of cool. No, I mean, incredible. I mean, he not only did that, he almost beat the Rams, I think, yeah. his first year in Detroit. And when nobody really believed in this in this chapter for him, everybody was like, oh, he's a bridge, the whole thing. And I think he's always going to exist in that that tier of quarterbacks that the public and maybe people upstairs in buildings are like, okay, he's he's a good quarterback, maybe not elite. You know, maybe we always have one eye on somebody else. Um, but if he continues to play this way, he's going to eat up a four or five year uh, window in Detroit and be their guy because their windows wide open. Uh, and, you know, as I said earlier in the season, I wanted to see more from them. I do think if they can host playoff games, they are contenders, whatever that word means um, because they have that attitude. They're fearless. And when a team's that fearless, when you know, Dan's half crazy and he's going to go on fourth, when you know, they're going to throw the kitchen sink at you and they have that attitude you have to match that that kind of nothing to lose uh, mindset. And not every team that they're going to play down the stretch is going to have that same mindset. It's so dangerous to have a team like that get into the dance. All right, we have to do our job and, and check the box, if we will, on the Jets. I, I don't think Trevor Simeon's a world beater. There's a reason he's bounced around as much as he has. I don't know that Tim Boyle is the answer either. But after watching what we saw again last night from the Jets and knowing Chris that they have the Bills and the Dolphins coming up in a span of five days. Yeah. Do you owe it to your defense and the rest of your team to try someone, something, anything different than Zach Wilson? In a word, yes. You do. <laughs> it's the best defense. I mean, like, this defense could be so damn good. I mean, they are so damn good, but... You know, talking about wasting defenses, that's what they're doing. Uh, last year, I think this group probably felt like, hey, just hang on for a year. They're going to go get help. And it's nothing against Zach. I mean, that's the hardest position in football. There's only, you know, 15 that are worth their salt in the league at any given time. And everybody else is just trying to figure out who's our next, next guy, that sort of thing. And, you know, he had a lot of expectations on him. Um, and I don't think it's an easy spot to be thrown into every Sunday when you know half the country hates you and probably most Jets fans want to see you get the hook. So I feel for the guy when he threw that pick last night, I could see his, his face on the sideline. It's not because he doesn't care. I mean, the kid is busting his butt to, to, to try to win games. But I think at this point it is a business and you do have all these guys on the other side of the ball who have been playing their hearts out at some point, not only for, for this team mathematically, but also for the, like the soul of this team. You know, when you, I was thinking about that plane ride on the way home last night, I, I think I used the word mutiny at, at one point, sitting here talking to the guys watching the game. If they lose this game, it's going to be like a mutiny on the plane ride. I, I know I know they got good guys in that locker room. I know Joe. I know Robert Sala is a, a great leader. Um, but at some point, those guys are going to look upstairs and say, hey, we got to make a change. And I think this was the last opportunity for for Zach if I'm the head coach. Yeah, I agree. And the schedule doesn't get easier. They get the the Bills and the Dolphins here. I mean, these are the yeah. two that they needed to win. Not not that the Chargers are, you know, some easy mark, but you have them at home on a Monday night. You hold them to under 200 yards. You have to win that game. And then you go face, I love Antonio Pierce, but you go face an interim head coach. 
you have a great defense and you're facing a rookie fourth round pick at quarterback like Aiden O'Connell. But again, this is a game where you need to get these wins if you want any chance of, of Aaron's ridiculous, miraculous comeback. Like when you hear Melissa Stark during the game last night, not doubting anything that Melissa or Mike or Chris heard in their prep for the game. But when you hear Melissa say Aaron Rodgers now targeting mid-December, like, okay, what? sure. sure. Okay. It's like, it's almost as if it's almost as if he, he keeps saying or dropping hints like this to, to almost to kind of, Hey, encourage this team. Hey guys, let's get it going here. You know, yeah. I'm outside. Well, I'm mean, knocking. Listen, I, Hey, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a, I'm not a surgeon. I'm not a physician, but Every time I've seen somebody pop their Achilles my whole life, it's taken a long time to come yeah. back. If he's going to come back at this age and do this and and he's going to play in December and be effective, it's going to be a, it's a it's a miracle of of modern medicine. So like, you know, I'm not trying to be a hater. I'm not trying to it's a, you know, you say, "Hey, people can doubt me, people can doubt, you know, uh this process, but what what else do you expect people to do? If you come back, great. Everybody's rooting for Aaron Rodgers to come back." They were a team I put in the Super Bowl when he was healthy to start the season. I, I think he's still good. I think he can still play. But with the way that offensive line's been, you know, taking snaps uh, and throwing the ball back and forth on the sideline is going to be way different than than trying to. I mean, it's going to be a lot of quick game is all I'm going to say. <laughs> It'll uh, be the only game. <laughs> yeah. So so I guess like I'm not I'm not I'm certainly not trying to throw salt on it because I'm not trying to be a hater. Um, but it, it is hard for me to imagine. Yeah, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Let's put yeah, it it's one way. of those things. Yeah, it's one of those things. But if they lose, I love two... to see Santa Claus. Yeah, you know, I, I I'm still holding out hope, stuff like that. But I'm not sure about the Achilles. Santa would be cool though. He would be cool. Or or if be. if like Aaron, because they play a TNF game right after Christmas. Like if he came back on the 28th, they're yeah. in Cleveland for that one. If he came back yeah. on the 28th, like dressed as Santa, that'd be cool. That'd be, that'd cool. be cool. Yeah, I have people would people would pay attention. People would pay attention. <laughs> Uh, pay attention to Chris's podcast, the green light podcast and watch on the CW, uh, the new inside the NFL with Ryan, with the always smiling Jay Cutler with Chad always. Ocho Cinco, uh, great stuff last week with Joe Burrow, with Shannon Crowder, with all of it. Chris, great to have you on, man. Talk Thanks to you soon. so much. See you. Chris Long, everybody. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to three Eastern for free.